Hello, my name is Stefan Seguin, and I'm a sales and business coach. I'm on the Prosper Show, and today we are going to talk about sales and how to increase your sales, answer objections, and guess what? Improve your business overall in these tough economic and challenging times. Welcome to the Online Prosperity Show, where we bring you the insights and strategies to help you achieve financial success and become part of the 1% closers. I'm your host, Prosper Tarulinga, and today I've got a very, very special guest who is a true expert in the art of closing deals and maximizing sales potential. Now, Stefan, how are you doing today? I'm doing amazing. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to yourself, but obviously, you know, to speak to your to your crowd, to your followers. I'm I'm truly grateful and I'm honored to be here. Uh, the pleasure is all ours. I hope you brought us some tequila because if you're there in Mexico, everybody's just wondering what's the weather, what's it all going like, but we'll hear all about it. So those that are watching right now, please join me in welcoming Stefan Seguin, a renowned high-ticket sales coach with nearly three decades of experience working with global sales organizations and helping businesses reach their full potential. I hope this interview is just going to put it out in the open what it is that you can do to be, do, and have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Now, Stefan, I could go on and on, but you're here now. You have had extensive background in sales and now coaching. What actually inspired you to transition into, say, high-ticket sales coaching and helping CEOs and businesses unlock their revenue and profit potential? You know, that's a great question, Prosper. I've been blessed to work for some of the largest and most recognized organizations in IT, in the IT space specifically, companies like IBM, like Lenovo, like HPE, and other resellers. <clears throat> and I've learned from the best and some of the, the best organizations out there. And throughout my career, I was always there helping CEOs of from Fortune 100 companies to smaller mid, mid-sized companies. But I've always contributed directly to their success. And I always had to step in and... <clears throat> Oftentimes, you know, you'll have clients, you'll speak to people and they'll, they'll share a vision with you. Now, my opportunity was to, okay, what's the vision, understand the vision, and then create solutions and put ideas together so I could show them what was possible. And at the same time, by doing so, help, you know, uh, increase productivity, help their sales, generate more revenues, more importantly, profits, right? Because at the end of the day, you can have all kinds of revenues and sales, but if your profit margins are very low, it won't help you because you have to pay your people, you have to pay bills. So I was always in there help, helping them show the path of, well, if you do this, here's how you can go get that extra 5, 10, 20, 30% of extra margin that will go back to your bottom line. And therefore, if you're making that extra amount of profits, what can that do for you? Can you hire more people? Can you train your people? Can you better service your clients? Can you take that money and do R&D with it to improve the products you're, you're providing? These are all things that I, over my career, I've always contributed directly. So your question of, well, okay, so you did that for so long and now why did you want to become a sales coach and help organizations like that? Well, because over my career, Helping these people, I said, you know what? There's a talent there. There's something I have that I want to share. I want to help as many people as I can. And the best way I found that I could do that on my own terms <clears throat> was to have my own coaching business and coaching practice. So taking and leveraging what I've learned over the years, now I want to give back. I want to give back as much value as I can to help you know, these businesses from, from midsize to larger size, especially with the current market conditions that are crazy right now, right? We've got crazy inflation. We've got all kinds of company laying off. And now there's all kinds of uncertainty. So I've been through a lot of uncertainty. I've been through, you know, the various market crashes from, you know, 1987 to uh, 2000 when we had the dot-com crash. Also, uh, the recent one in 2009 that basically almost wiped out the entire capitalist system out there. I was part of that. I actually got laid off 
during those times. So it's made me very resilient. It's made me look at business in a very different way, provide a different perspective. Oftentimes, I, I'll get clients that call me and say, look, I don't necessarily need the coaching, but I do need the business perspective. Can you help me kind of see it from a different angle that I'm not necessarily pursuing? I can step in and help you with that just to give you a different way of thinking, different avenues that you may not have thought of that all of a sudden, oh, I didn't see it that way. Maybe I can leverage social media in a different way. Maybe my, I can change my message, my go-to-market strategy. Maybe I can partner up with somebody who is doing really well, who can help me. We can kind of do a joint venture together. These are all things that I can bring to the table to help business owners and CEOs and founders increase their sales, protect their business. You know, a lot of these businesses at the end of the day, they're hiring people. You know, people have families. You've got to put food on the table. Well, if I can go in and help these owners and founders and CEOs not have to cut people, on the contrary, grow in these uncertain times, then guess what? My mission statement, my value statement is completely fulfilled. And that's what I'm looking for. Fantastic. That's a really heart centered, um, you know, approach, because at the end of the day, at any given moment, somebody is selling you something and somebody's being sold onto something. It could be an idea. I've got kids. They're always selling me on the next piece of candy and I cave in. So that also needs to be happening. And I also like the fact that your sales goes way beyond just looking at the bottom line or the profit, but you're also looking at the value that businesses are bringing to families because the more people are generating value to a business, the more families and, like you say, food on the table. Now, for that to happen, sales really also has to be prevalent, okay? Somebody has to be sold yes. on ideas or uh, ideologies. And people, when they hear the term sales, they're always thinking, ah, oh, closing. All right, I got to close that sale. I got to make my conversions. I got to do things in order to make the sale happen, right? Now, closing techniques really play a crucial role in sealing all these deals. Now, could you maybe sure. share some proven techniques that can help our audience become effective sales uh, closers? Sure. You know, that's a great question. And you know what? Throughout my career, I've been surrounded by sales mentors and sales coaches. And I myself invested heavily into working with mentors because the market evolves, sales techniques evolves. You know, what we did 20 years ago is completely different to how we approach people today. What's one of those differences? Um, clients today are a lot more informed. They have access to a tremendous amount of information that, you know, if I don't stay on the, what I call the bleeding edge. So if I don't stay on top of things, then people will just not even think, you know, listen to what I what I'm suggesting because I'm not with the times. So, you know, in, in order to to be successful in sales today, I would tell you it's not it's not about selling, right? It's much more about when when you think back on when you buy something, especially when you, for example, let's say you buying a certain type of car, you may go back to that same dealer time and time again, and at the end of the day. If if you really look at that transaction that took place, they didn't sell you. You sold yourself on why you needed to buy that car from that dealer, from that particular salesperson. So today it's not about selling so much as it is to have your client buy from you. So what are the things that you can do in order for that to happen? It's simple. Ask questions. Truly listen actively on what the customer is exactly looking for. Listen to their needs. And sometimes you'll realize that when you're asking those questions, you'll uncover needs that they didn't even know they had. And that's when you'll see all of a sudden, you'll see a light bulb go off. And they'll say to you, oh my God, I never even thought of that. And the best compliment that any salesperson can get at the end of the day, be it you know, you're selling lower ticket or you're seeing selling very high ticket because everybody has a bit of a you know, different conception of what low ticket and high ticket is. You know, high ticket for me could be several million dollars and an entry level ticket could be fifteen hundred dollars. Low ticket could be five hundred bucks. So but regardless of that, at the end of the day is, well, 
they'll say, thank you. Thank you for showing me something I didn't know I needed. Thank you for making me realize that the only way I can bridge that gap from where I am today to where I want to be is working with you as a trusted advisor. So when you get that kind of compliment and they'll say to you, thank you, man, you're the best salesperson on the planet. Because at the end of the day, I'll never be the best closer. The best closer actually is the client in front of me. If you're able to ask the right questions, lead them in the right direction of what he is looking for, right? And I would tell you that when I work with some, some organizations that are having challenges, one of the key things that I realized that the better organizations do than the ones that are struggling, and that is to... They'll say, sorry about that. I just need to take a break here. I just lost my, my train of thought. But they will say, um, what makes you different is actually your ability to sell what they want. It's what they need. It's, it's not about the thing that you're selling. It's not the thing that sells the thing. Right? One mentor of mine. Uh, and and his name was Dan Locke, uh, amazing amazing man. And but he shared with me, you know, it's not it's not the thing that sells the thing, it's the thing. And that thing is that value, that amazing value that you bring to your client. That when your client listens to that and understands that, understands the, the fundamentals underneath that, that will trigger that man or woman to say, you know what, I need that, and I want to work with you. Right, so that's exactly. what I work on. Uh, that's what I work on every day. Fantastic. And that's a whole different way of looking at it, because when you are collaborating with the customer and helping them, you know, reach that goal or find that solution that they're looking for, it no longer becomes, um, you know, sales closing. You are literally enabling them to reach and bridge that gap, like you say, um, as you go along and half of the time, most of uh, the people already have convinced themselves, um, you know, what it is that they want, but they just maybe don't know how to get there. And if you present your solution as that vehicle, it actually creates that, um, you know, bridge that they're looking for in order for them to have maybe a happier existence or whatever it is that, um, you know, can answer the problems they might be having. Now, along the way, you know, uh, Stefan, and thank you so much for that elaborate uh, answer before. Along the way, you know, you might notice that, wait a minute, my client has no right information or right mindset, and they present um, what we term in the sales profession as objections, all right? So you, when yes. you work with your people, handling objections can often be maybe a stumbling block for sales professionals, because you're trying to lead somebody, um, you know, to the proverbial well, but then you can't force them to then drink. How can you maybe um, help our audience better understand objections and literally identify their root causes and navigate them to ultimately secure a yes or a collaborative uh, close with uh, potential clients? Oh, that's a great question. And I would tell you so many conversations I have around that where people are saying, look, can you help my team improve on that? Can you help my team better handle objections? And, and, and the answer I provide is yes, but the, the fundamental reason why you're getting objections and most people kind of are get taken aback by that is when I say to them, well, you're bringing, you're causing the objections yourselves by the words that you're using, by the conversation you're having not only with the customer, but in your mind. Let me, let me, let me explain. Let's say, for example, I'll, I'll use the car, for example. You're, you're going in to buy a car, and the salesperson you're speaking with to buy that car, he's selling you on, on this specific vehicle that you're looking for, that you want that, by the way, he has the same vehicle. And when he comes to you and say, okay, well, you know, do you want the extended warranty? That seems to be like a, a simple question, right? It should be a simple answer. And most people will say, no, I'm, I'm not interested. 
The issue is that a lot of these salespeople, when they do buy a vehicle from the company they represent, um, they themselves don't even buy the extended warranty. So immediately that says in their minds, in their mindset, right, that in their inner mind that says, well, I don't believe in the in the extended warranty thing. It's too much money. I don't believe in it. So I'm not going to propose it. So and the way, even if I did propose it, I'm going to phrase it in such a way that there's going to be uncertainty, right? There's It's, it's going to be a little bit anxious when I talk about it. I don't feel comfortable about it because I feel I'm taking advantage of the customer and this is where we make money. So all these interior, all this interior dialogue that you're having well, guess what happens when you're in front of your customer, you tar- start talking about that. Your customer will feel that, it'll come through, and that'll be an objection that'll come. It's And, and I've seen this time and time again and through mentors and through my sales training as well. When I had self-doubt about a specific product or service or solution I was offering, it almost always came back as an objection. So that being said, what do you do when you do have those objections? Well, you have to understand where those objections are coming from. And I could spend, you know, a week, 10 days just talking about, okay, what you can do to answer these objections because the objections come up. Okay, so why do they come up? Right? So you could say, for example, you could respond. They, they'll ask you or they'll tell you an objection and you can respond by a question. Okay, so what do you mean by that? What specifically do you mean that it's too expensive? In comparison to what, for example. So there's different techniques I can use or we can I can teach, and, and I do that to help you address those objections. Now, if anybody says, Oh, I guarantee you, I'll give you all the, the, the right answers to give, and I, look that guys, that's crap. There, there's you know, there's to be honest, I mean, you'll not you're not gonna win every deal. Can you improve significantly, improve your success rate and how you handle objections? Absolutely. I'm a huge proponent of role play. Why? Because my philosophy is if you practice, and I call it the dojo, right? So it's it's like doing martial arts. If you practice in the dojo or in the boxing ring exactly like you would in a match where it's kind of life or death, well, guess what? If you practice the same way, the, the likelihood of your success when you do come out in real life is significantly higher. Right. And, and we're talking significant. Like I've seen results vary you anywhere from 30 to 60, 70 percent improvement in person's ability to handle those objections. So that's one thing as well that I do when I work with people. I offer them that opportunity to say, look, let's role play together. We'll, we'll take some time and then we can we can do that and then we can practice how to handle those things and how to avoid creating those false objections. Fantastic. And I really appreciate you taking us in the dojo with that one, because that really shifts the mindset. Instead of you just looking at sales as a numbers game, putting your foot in the door, sell or be sold, you know, all those mantras of old uh, days. And it really shifts the perspective of if you are working alongside your customer, you literally would actually get a collaborative, you know, outcome. And it now becomes, um, you know, not so difficult for both parties involved. And that is a totally different mindset to what people have. You know, if you ask anyone about sales, they're thinking, um, you know, used car salesmen, they're thinking door knockers, they're thinking uh, yes. cold calling, all those anxiety inducing uh activities and you just laid it out that you need to just change your mindset around that now my question to you is developing a winning mindset is really essential from what you're saying to the success in your sales um you know activities and so what what sort of strategies do you recommend um you know for coaches and consultants that are watching and listening to the show right now to cultivate a right. mindset that actually empowers them as sales people to overcome the challenges that they might uh, come across on their way to achieving their goals. Right. You know what? That's a great question. And I get that question asked often. And I would tell you, yes, mindset's important, right? Mindset. You, you hear a lot of people talk about mindset, but I like to take it a step further. It's also the identity that you, how you see yourself as a salesperson. You know, if you identify yourself as like you mentioned before, right? The, 
the typical, you know, pushy salesperson who does just doesn't care, who is just wants to sell at any price, at any on any conditions, and just push, push, push. Yeah, it's you know you're going to have a hard time. I'm a big proponent of uh, changing your identity. How do you see yourself? So if if you're out there and you want to really change the way you do things, change how you sell, how you approach your client, change your identity first. Right? When you change your identity, is that all of a sudden now you're seeing yourself as a different person. You're seeing yourself as a person who wants to drive value. You're seeing yourself, instead of pushing a client, you're pulling in a client. Big difference there. Huge difference. Because now clients are, when they're pulled in towards you, it's because they start feeling that they can trust you, right? One of the worst things, like on a lot of calls, introductory calls, for example, for me, one of the worst things that you can say to a client is, how are you doing today? Or am I calling you at a bad time? Why? Right away, that sends alarm bells. Okay, sales guy, salesperson, they're, gonna, <laughs> they're bugging me. I have no time for you, right? Like I'm busy. I got no time. Right. So these are little things, you know, that I work on with, other salespeople with CEOs and guys change the vocabulary a little bit, but also you to be able to do that comfortably, you have to see yourself differently. So look at yourself in the mirror and say, okay, how do I see myself? That's the first start. How do I see myself? You know, when I approach clients, am I, am, am I a tiger? Am I a shark? Or am I more, wait a minute, I want to have a consultative selling approach where now I'm, I, I want the best for my client. I want to become that trusted advisor. I, I want them to trust me. In order to do that, you have to open the lines of communication. You have to bring down the barriers, you know, the, the gate in front of them. You have to bring that down for them to start saying, okay, hey, wait a minute, maybe, maybe this person actually cares. You know, I shared this on, on a LinkedIn post and I said, just asking a client, by the way, Mr. Customer or Mrs. Customer, what you're telling me seems important. Do you mind if I take notes? And I've seen incredible results with that. And I've had customers actually say, you want to take notes? That's the first time anybody's given me that, has even offered to do that, to ask my permission. So what does that do mentally for a client? So when you change your, your identity and you're, using in a consultative, consultative approach, the customers start saying, wait a minute, he actually cares. He's actively listening to what I have to say. He values what I'm saying, and it's not just a sale. Now, it truly becomes understanding what my business pains and challenges are, and potentially with the information now, that open line of communication that's created between, that goes both ways, all of a sudden now they'll open their doors a little wider to allow you to dig a little deeper. What happens when you can dig a little deeper? You build, you're building trust, but at the same time, you may help your clients uncover real issues that they didn't even know they had. So what can that do for your organization? Your organization? Well, instead of just selling a deal that's worth 10K, well, guess what? Now they may need additional consultants. They may need additional services. So your, your 10K deal may turn out to be 50 or 100K. I mean, what would that do if you're increasing your, your, your deal by $90,000? What could that do for you? Well, big difference. Right? Definitely. A huge difference. So it, it, you know, changing your, your mindset, one thing, yes. But more importantly, first, you need to change your identity. Once you change your identity as more of a consultative selling type salesperson and then adapting your mindset, saying, okay, I want the best for my client. I'm looking out for my client. I want the best for my client. All of a sudden, you'll, you'll see huge changes in your success, in your sales abilities, in your self-confidence, in your ability to deliver. So three things. My uh, identity, mindset, self-confidence. When you link those three together, you can literally become unstoppable. Fantastic. Now, 
hold on while I take notes. Sorry, let me ask you first. Can I please take notes, uh, Stefan? I've actually learned yes. something. I just jump into it, but just putting that extra layer of, hey, could I please, asking somebody's permission and, you know what I mean, just really engaging them and involving them uh, in the whole process actually makes a whole difference because I'm a very big proponent of the collaborative um, approach and this seems to be what, what it is that you are, um, you know, advocating for now. Stefan, I've, I've learned to ask about notes. I'm not going to ask you again, but as a mentor and as a business coach um, and, and you know, now you're a strategic consultant, what sort of specific sort of expertise and services do you then offer your clients and how do they uh, benefit with working f with you? And if you can, just show us where we can uh, go to find more about uh, your services um, since I'm already sold on you right now. So, yeah. Right. Right. So, First, I would say that the way to the, the way I like working with, I'm open to clients' needs. Like I'm not closed, and I'm not going to say I don't have a program or I don't have anything like this. I'm not going to say that I do, but I like to work with clients with their specific business needs. You know, a CEO of a mid-sized organization is not necessarily going to have the same challenges as a large organization. So. I like to first have that open conversation, sit down and let's understand, because maybe, you know what, maybe I'm not the right person. Maybe I'm not going to be able to help you. However, because of my extensive experience, because of those 25 years and, and, and the network I have, well, guess what? I may be able to refer you to somebody who can actually provide you greater value than I can at this point in time. However, if we can sit down and I can understand kind of where you're coming from, what is it you need? I like to do a little bit like when you're going to see a doctor, right? The doctor's not going to prescribe a pill right away. He'll diagnose what's going on. You know, how long has this been going on? What seems to be the problem? How is it impacting you personally? How is it impacting your business? How is it impacting your employees? And slowly from there, I can start building an image, right, of what's happening, what's working, what's not working so well. And then from there, I like to do a lot of one-on-one -on -one coaching because it's important that we can have that trusted connection. So the best way people can reach out to me or, or look at what I do or my past experience, my LinkedIn profile. The other one uh, is my website. So Stefan Seguin, uh, www.stefanseguin.com. Fantastic. And thank you so much for sharing with us your um, piece of the internet there. I will definitely put those links in the show notes and they will be popping up, um, you know, throughout the whole video here. And obviously with, with where you are and who you've become, there has been so much learning. You've mentioned uh, earlier on your mentor, Dan uh, Locke, who obviously... Yes is very prevalent on the internet there. And I'm now sensing that, you know, continuous education is something that you have really embodied and all the things that you've learned have made you culminate into the person that you have become. So with a lot of people, the last time they opened a book or the last time they went to some sort of formal education was when they did their certification or high school. Now, from what I'm gathering from you, continuous education and staying on the cutting edge are vital to be successful in sales, whether you're a sales professional, you're a coach or you're a consultant and things of that nature. Now, how do you recommend that individuals maybe educate themselves on market trends, sales techniques, and really expand their network of contacts? Well, you know what, that's, that's a, a great question. I would say, well, to take back, and, and, and I'm sure your followers are familiar with this, and they'll say, you know, you're the five people in your network kind of define who you are. So surround yourself with the top people that you can surround yourself with that are prosperous. And prosperous doesn't, ser doesn't necessarily mean money, right? It, it, it can mean prosper. You, you, of you heard that from him. No, I, I, didn't, I didn't pay you to say <laughs> that. No, Thank you. Right? But certainly, but certainly, um, you know, putting it's it's not about necessarily the money, but it's also about the people that it can influence you in a positive direction, right? That have foresight, that have insight in in areas that you don't have information on. 
So if you surround yourself, first of all, with your network, a, a really good network. So your network is your net worth is super important to me. Second of all, yeah, staying on top of things, the market's evolving. Look, we just can, can talk about ChatGPT. A lot of people are familiar with ChatGPT. Just look at how AI is changing the face of how people interact, how people go to business, their business strategies, their social media strategies, right? So that is changing. So if you're not on top of where the market and everybody has their respective market and niche, but if you're not a leader, if you're not a thought leader, if you're not seeing trends before other people do, you know, you, you can have chat GPT, but if, if you're not able to interpret it and where it's going, where your market is going, you're not ahead. So staying on top of those things, right? Going to masterminds is another big one. If you have masterminds or local chamber of commerces in your area, you know, you get an opportunity to speak with business people that have been in business for 20, 30 years, right? Especially in the types of conditions and market conditions we're living in now, you know, if, if you tag yourself or, or somehow get linked up with business owners that are successful and were successful during a pandemic, were successful during the last crashes, well, the likelihood of you being able to succeed if you listen to what they have to say and, and you communicate with them and you exchange them and you get to have them in your network, that can carry you so much faster and further forward than anything else. And then, yes, lastly, books, podcasts like yours that are you know bringing in tremendous amount of value to, to your followers and more and more people are coming in. I'm the best example of that. Um, coming in and, you know, hearing about you. And I was so interested by your story. I'm here because it brought value to me. So doing that, don't, doing those things will, will keep you on top of, of the market, keep you informed, but at the same time, giving tremendous amount of value. Today, it's all about the value you bring to your clients, guys. You know, you want success. It's, it's the value. It's not just a leadership, but it's the value, how you can interpret the information and help your clients market that information to help them thrive. If you can do that, man, you're golden every day. Fantastic. That really, really is what it's all about. And I really appreciate you, um, you know, bringing your sentiments and that sort of insight onto our show today. And obviously, with the way things are going on, you've mentioned that you survived, you know, all the market downturns. You you uh, survived the <laughs> Y2K. Uh, global scare you survived 2008 and the last couple of years have not been um, you know <laughs> easy for a lot of people and you know it's just really left a lot of people questioning their own existence now if people have been sort of sold onto your way of being your mindsets the way you think and your expertise and how they can actually gain much more value with you what can people really expect from stephanie moving forward you know like what is the future looking like um for yourself and for those that are going to be uh working with you moving forward so the one thing is first of all is, is building trust Right for me, it's a big thing. Like if people can't trust me as their coach or as a as a mentor, um, then why work with me? Right. So so when I when people work with me, I bring trust. I bring it all. Like I bring one hundred and fifty percent because I want you to succeed. Um, thing is, I can't want it more than you do. Right. So, however, I will be committed to your success. I will share with you every possible thing that I know that can help you thrive, help you grow, help you improve, whether for you as an individual, as a CEO, a business owner, or to help your sales team sell more, right? And be more productive and be more respected. At the end of the day, you'll notice that, you know, I've worked with organizations where people were lining up at the door to work with us and work with me because of our, uh, reputation in a marketplace, it's a big one today. Reputation, 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 right? Uh, our skills, our knowledge, the people that we had around us, how we were able to find solutions to sometimes the problems that people couldn't even solve, right? But thinking out of the box. So if you want somebody who, to you know, bounce ideas off, somebody who can help you see or get a different perspective about your business, somebody who will be dedicated 
to help you succeed, who truly is interested in your success, then, you know, you've come to the right place and I'd love to be able to work with you. Fantastic. Well, if we don't end it on such a high note, I don't think um, we would have done justice to the value that you've brought to this show there, Stefan. Now, that concludes our insightful discussion with Stefan Seguin, an accomplished high-ticket sales coach and mentor who has shared with us invaluable strategies for closing deals, handling objections, and actually cultivating a winning mindset for sales success. Now, remember, success is a, is, is, is a process and it's something that is within your reach. Please um, help me thank Stefan for his time, expertise, and his inspiration that he's given us uh, on the show today.